All right, we're starting our tonight's service, and uh, we boy, what a great message God gave us this morning, and, and if you haven't heard that message, uh, then go to our website at lyitl.org. That's abbreviated for loveyouandthelord.org. Go to that website, and it says, if you missed a sermon, click here. And what that will do, it'll take you to a page that will direct you to our YouTube channel, and that's where we store all of our sermons. So I, I just pray that it was going to be a blessing to you. I know that we need to understand whenever Paul said, I must decrease and he must increase. So uh, once again, go back and see if that message might not be something that would touch your heart. All right. And if it does, find somebody out that you'd like to tag them, send it to them and uh, let them know how it affected you. Okay. All right. Well, tonight and everything, uh, I want to talk about Acts chapter 16, verse 25, and it's simply entitled at midnight. Uh, when you go back and I do read out the King James version. And so I'm going to read that to you. Acts chapter 16, verse 25, Lady Karen, it says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. Now then Paul and Silas were arrested, uh, in Philippi and they were beaten. I mean, bodily beaten. And then they were cast into prison in the Lord dungeon. And so at midnight, Paul and Silas, they prayed. Now, now get a picture of this. You know, they were uh, probably, ripped, their clothes were ripped. Their, their bodies were beaten. They're in a cold, clammy, dark chamber. And at midnight, Paul and Silas, though, because of their character, we talked about character this morning, they sang praises, look at this, unto God. See, it's one thing, Lady Karen, it's one thing to sing a, a song like Amazing Grace. But boy, when you sing it and you see God on the throne and, and you sing it to him, it's different. It's very personal. So at midnight, Paul and Silas, they prayed and they sang praises unto God. Now, think about that. Could you, if you were in that same, that same place they're in, uh, you were beaten, ripped away from your families, possibly going to have to die and everything, and it's midnight. That means that you only have a few hours left before they're going to come get you and they're going to go out and uh, bring a treatment to you known as death. And so here, uh, as the dark and, and out of the depths, they cried unto God. And so no place, no time was amiss for them to pray. No trouble, however grievous, could actually hinder them from praise. You see, when you're going through a moment, you've got to add praise to it. God, I don't understand it, but I'm going to praise you for it. God, it's not something I like going through, but I'm going to praise you for it. You know, it's amazing to me that uh, people don't understand when Paul and Silas were in their position, they were also bound and they were fettered. That means tied with tight ropes uh, that were digging in. They were tortured and, and their spirit still had liberty. Let me ask you this. When you're going through hard times, does your spirit still have liberty to offer unto God praises? And uh, and yet here they, they could pray and praise God in the darkness. And Paul and Silas were praying and they were singing simultaneously and they were blending together their petition and their praise to God. And not only did Paul and Silas pray and sing praises to God, but they sang and prayed intentionally so that the other prisoners could hear what they were singing and who they were singing to. And never before had such sounds at midnight uh, ever been heard from the inner Philippian dungeon, the lowest of the low. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen some of the discussions about these dungeons, but you have to understand there's no running water down there. There's no toilets to be relieved from. So you can imagine the stench and the horror of being in that place. And the Bible says clearly that the, all the prisoners heard them. They were listening to them. The Greek verb heard, H-E-A-R-D. It's a very rare verb, meaning to listen with pleasure to a, a, a recital or a music that's being sung. 
It was a new experience for the prisoners. Hi, Starlet, good to see you. We're in Acts chapter 16, verse 25. It was a new experience for the prisoners and wonderfully attractive. It was more than just entertainment. It was touching their hearts and their souls. So we're talking about Acts 16, 25. And at midnight, you know, we all have that midnight hour where our hearts are broken, we're scared, and life is falling apart. But we described to you earlier the conditions that Paul and Silas were in. But even in those conditions, they wanted people to know about God. Rather than complaining, they sang praises. It says they were saying praises unto God. And so I want to take and relive that experience a little bit tonight with some thoughts that I think will might help you if you're going through a dark time in your life, uh, the midnight hour. So first of all, uh, from what we learned from this is, Starla, we, we, we need to pray. And when do we pray, Lady Karen? At all times, at all times. And at midnight, Paul and Silas, they prayed with earnestly in their spirit to God. And while others slept, they prayed. You know, I know what it's like to have something so heavy on my heart that even the midnight hour, I'm still praying with God and unto God. And then there are some times that I don't have the words to speak. And sometimes I would go out in the backyard uh, especially whenever I was years ago when I was completely alone and, and I would just raise my hands and drop on my knees and start praising God. And so I had I had my prayer time. I had my praise time. But I noticed that after I, I sang unto God that my prayers began to change. And I think you'll find the same thing too. But while others slept, they prayed. And, and when things were still and quiet, they prayed. And when they was cold and alone, they prayed and, and for all things. We should pray at all times. And number two, we should pray for all things. They prayed, no doubt, of course, for themselves. But let me give you a secret. In the Bible, God always says, if you do this, I will do that. And so one of the things that I've been doing lately is uh, if, if you need healing in some area of your life, I begin to make my healing prayer list. I begin to pray for others. I pray for their healing. And I'll tell you right now, uh, you know, I, I know we're taking some different vitamins and things like that, but there's something about praying for somebody else's healing. And, and, with, and I don't mean just, oh, they're on my list. I mean with compassion. Lord, please, I ask you to heal their mind, heal their body, no matter what they're going through. And I've noticed in the last week, and, and Lady Karen, I think you've noticed it, that it seems that I'm doing better doing a lot better. So I'm giving God the credit for that. So he says, if you give, you'll receive. If you pray for someone else, for their healing, I believe that God, if you're doing it with compassion and love and, and everything else and really put and they're heavy on your heart, I think God sees that and that touches God's heart. And I believe that many a times uh, you'll begin to experience your own healing. Maybe you're hurting. Maybe you, and, and you need to, instead of whining and crying about it, uh, change, your, change your list from a cry list to a praise list. And then put people on that list that you know are hurting like you're hurting. Pray for their healing. Pray that God help them. And, and yet, the Bible says they did it at the midnight hour, at a very dark time in their lives. So we need to pray, number one, at all times. Number two, for all things. Uh, they, and, and like I said, they prayed for the support uh, under their present affliction that God would hear them. And they prayed for God to give them that added grace to enable them to bear, listen, with patience and cheerfulness their present troubles. God, I'm going through some things, but I'm going to praise You. Lord, in my tears uh, that are tears of sorrow, I'm going to turn them into tears of praise. Then they prayed for their enemies. Do you know that? They prayed particularly for the jailer who was there that had abused them and severely, severely hurt them. How many of you today are holding grudges because somebody said something to you or they maybe hurt you in some way? And, and, and the, the Bible is giving us examples here. Not only did they pray at all times, not only did they pr uh, pray for all things, but they prayed for the ones that had abused them. Instead of pray, praying that God heal my, my hurt, Lord, you know what they were doing? They were praying for the one that caused the hurt. They prayed for the jailer. They prayed for all... Listen, we should be praying for all churches and all saints. 
You say, well, I don't go to that church. Listen, uh, man, I, I covet everybody. You may not attend the church where I've been pastoring for over 37 years. You may not be going to uh, attend the church or, or the ministry that we're going to have, you know, even online. But I will tell you this right now, you should be praying for all the pastors and all the uh, churches in our area that are faithful and true to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they pray uh, uh, that the gospel would be spread and they would have success, that people would get saved. Now, now listen to this right here. What do you do in times of trouble and times of grief and times of pain? Do you pray or you just cry about the situation? So what do you pray for? You need to let us learn from Paul and Silas to pray in our troubled times. So number one, we need to pray. Lady Karen, it says in verse 25, we need to sing. Do you get that? At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. That's point number one. Number two, they sang praises unto God. When the Bible says in a terrible time, they sang praises unto God. They sang a hymn unto God. Very likely one of David's psalms and, or the hymns from the book of Psalms would be a, a book of hymns. Uh, and a lot of times we, in the book of Psalms, you'll, you'll see a, a, a comment and then it'll say Selah. That means to pause. And many times they would raise it up an octave like this. Now pardon my singing ahead of time. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. You see, they would pause and they would let it soak in and then they a lot of times would change the octave, go up or down. So Paul and them were probably, you know, singing high to your guy to see you online. We're in the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 25. So listen, yes, we need to learn to pray during that midnight hour, but there's something special about that. All right? But we need to sing. Sing, sing, sing. Why? Uh, you know, find a song. And that what I just tried to attempt to sing, and I, if nothing else, you probably made you cry to hear, hear me sing. Right? But in all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. What I'm saying is, find you something that you can sing. And then you can just rehearse that in your heart and pray it out to God. And that's probably what Paul and Silas were doing. They found them a good hymn, probably from the book of Psalms of David. And so Paul and Silas, that we learned they could sing in the worst possible circumstances. Now the Bible doesn't say that, say that they sang well. But I will say this, the prisoners enjoyed it. They're not used to hearing singing in the dungeon. And so in spite of their circumstances, here they are. They're praying at all times and, and then they're singing unto God and their feet were in the stocks. They were in a, the innermost prison, the worst place to be, where all the dung and urine probably flowed down to where they were at. They were in the most loathsome and uncomfortable condition and they were tied with ropes and bound. And they were anticipating even greater punishment, even death coming their way in the morning. But they were thankful to God and they glorify God who had counted them worthy to suffer for His name. And we find out it's not easy to sing praises when our world is falling apart. But, what, but that is what Paul and Silas did as an example. What do you do when your world's falling apart? Have you found a song? Have you, have you got along with God and just, just worshipped Him and praised Him? And instead of just whining and complaining about your situation, just pray that God gets the glory from it all. And so the Scripture speaks of songs in the night. In fact, in Job chapter 35, verse 10, But none saith, Where is God my Maker, who giveth songs in the night? See, God will give you a song in your heart if you allow Him to. Somebody said, well, I just diagnosed with cancer. God will give you a song. Well, now I've just found out I'm going through a divorce. Let God give you a song. A song that you can sing that would not only raise your spirit and glorify God, but it would raise everybody else's spirit around you. So Scripture speaks of songs in the night. In Psalms chapter 42, verse 8, Yet the Lord will command His love kindness in the daytime, 
And in the night, listen, his song shall be with me. His song shall be with me. And my prayer unto God of my life. When's the last time you let God put a song in your heart? Maybe you're still mourning. Maybe you're still bitter. But maybe you ought to take and, and wait till the midnight hour and just get alone and, and begin to praise God and begin to pray for those that, that maybe they're going through something like you're going through. But we find here also in Psalm 77 verse 6, I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with my own heart and my spirit made diligent search. There's just something special about the midnight cry. So let us learn to have a song of praise even in the midnight of our grief and our hurt and our pain. Paul and Silas did not just pray, but they sang praises unto God. There's three things we're learning tonight out of Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Let's read it again. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. So I want you to put this on your outline. Number one, we need to pray. Number two, we need to sing. Not just a song, but God's song. Let God put a song in your life. And you might find that even through the tears, it turns into smiles. All right? Then number three, last of all, we need to be heard. So, and the prisoners, but the Bible says, heard them. Uh, there were, were other prisoners besides Paul and Silas. Hi, Catherine James. We're in Acts chapter 16, verse 25. So we need to pray, we need to sing, and we need to be heard. What? Did, but nowadays, people, all they hear is our complaining. Listen, if, if you're a child of God and, and you're hurting, don't, don't go out there and blast it on Facebook. Don't, don't, don't do that. I mean, you got to have some Christian character. We talked about Christian character this morning. Some of you may or may not go back and listen to this morning's message. But Lady Karen, I think it will bless them, don't you? It was a message from God. And so here, their song was also a message from God. Uh, there were other pre uh, uh, prisoners beside themselves. Hey, how many people do you know, that family and friends, that they too are prisoners of their own demise? Hey, well, how many of you know that they're suffering and they're bitter and they're angry? And when they get around you, all you're going to do is ignite the fire of their bitterness and their anger. You see, let God give you a song for that person and for you. It is good for us to pray. It's good for us to sing. What does it do? Uh, it refreshes your mind. It lightens your heart. Listen, if you're going through a bitter time or a hurt time, hey, quit listening to... Now, listen, I know you don't get mad probably turn me off, but... Turn off the country music. Turn off the rock and roll. And find you something that's going to lift your heart and your soul. Put on some Christian music. Uh, there, some of the old hymns like Amazing Grace. Oh, you know, uh, and, and you talk about the songs and the hymns. They talk about the blood that will wash away our sins. Spend some time preparing your heart before you go out in the backyard and during the midnight hour and lift your hands to God and your knees fall to the ground and your tears that of, of, of sorrow turn into tears of praise and glorifying God. It's good for others to hear us pray. It's good for others to hear us sing. The Bible says, you know what it says about singing? Lake Karen, it says this. It says just sing loud. You don't have to be on key. Hey, listen, when, you're, when your grandbaby comes to you and they sing and, and, they, and they don't even get the words right, the boy, does it bless your heart? You know, you love to hear them sing to you. Hey, what about your great-grandkids? It doesn't matter if they're uh, your kid, a grandkid, a great -grand Listen, when they're little bitty things, listen. It's amazing how people say, well, when, when a husband and wife are there and, and, and the wife told a husband one day, he said, when they're good, they're mine. When they're bad, they're yours. <laughs> you know? But, you know, when they sing to anybody, it just melts your heart. That's the way God is. And, and if you want to take and, and get God to, to put a song in your heart, you got to put a song in His heart. See, the Bible says, if you do this, I will do that. We learn that even through tithes and offerings. If you do this, I'm going to bless you. And he, said, he says, if we give, 
I'm going to bless you. Uh, you know, and, and so there, there's a principle here. So if you'll put a song in God's heart, coming from your heart, God will give you another song, oh, like you've never had before. And it's good for others to hear that song and that praise. It's a great testimony to others about our God. We talked about our G-O-D today, the big G-O-D, our God. So what a new sound this must must have been to the prisoners. It, had it been in, in a Christian land, uh, you'd think that the memories of, of that night uh, would unlock the hardness of the heart. But they weren't from a Christian land. Do you know that? So here we find that, that as they sang these songs, some of the memories of the prisoners began to come back to them. And so it was a new gospel. They'd never heard it before. It was a new gospel of gladness that was going forth. It was a gospel a song of confidence and a joy in an unseen God, which in such circumstances, uh, those old Romans knew nothing at all about Christianity. Nothing about the God of Abraham and, 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 and the God of Isaac and the God of David and the, and the God even of Paul and Silas. Is He really your God? Or do you just speak His name and carry a Bible around? Maybe you take notes on, on some kind of a commentary. But do you, will you let God, when you go to read your Bible, ask God to open your heart. Ask God to give you wisdom. Ask God to help you to understand. So that those, those words that in that Bible that come alive can change the things that are dead in you so you can come alive. So, but the old Romans, they knew nothing about this gospel that Paul and Silas were singing about. People are more prone to listen to those who, who humanly speaking, have nothing to rejoice in. They'd rather hear about your misery. But such a testimony of prayer, a testimony of singing, and also a testimony of conversion, at least conviction of the goodness of Christ, Paul and Silas pray. Go back and read the rest of Acts chapter 16. Oh my. You see, even, even, even though they were in a bad situation, probably going to die in the morning. They sang songs about the goodness of God. The goodness of Christ and His cause for which the apostles were suffering. And so it is a testimony that the Christian is always, listen, is always above their circumstances. I'm going to say that again. I ought to take and put that on the wall. That's a good phrase right there. Listen, listen. It's a testimony of your God that you love and you pray to. It is a testimony that the Christian is always above their circumstances. Because instead of focusing on the storm, they're focusing on the one who can calm the storm. It's a testimony of God's presence being the greatest of all of the circumstances and uh, that, that which overcomes all of the ongoing circumstances. Listen, when, when the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm in the what? I'm in the midst of them. Here, Paul and Silas, man, they, they begin to encourage one another. And they, they listen, when, when your heart is down, listen, if you've got a mate, listen, your job and role is not to condemn them, but to praise God with them. You know, one person told me one time that if it wasn't for all the things you've been through, you would not have turned out to be the preacher that you are today. Think about that. I, I haven't li had a perfect life, I, but I have a perfect God. And God got me through. I look back over it through 37 years. Almost 37 years now pastoring here at the church. And we've been through a lot. And yet I look back how God worked in each and every one. How God worked in the circumstances. In spite of the circumstances. So when you pray to God, God begins to work on the hearts of other people. So that He can send them to you and you can be a blessing to them. And they can be a blessing to you. But again... It is a testimony. What kind of testimony did you have when you went through your darkness? Were you blasting everybody? Were you upset with everybody? And, and, and I'm going to encourage you. Listen, I, I like putting things on Facebook that's going to lift people up. It's going to make them think. 
But, but I don't want to go out there and talk about all my sorrow and all my grief. But I want to go out there and talk about what a great God I have and, 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 and just begin to praise Him and love Him and serve Him. That's why we're here tonight. In spite of circumstances, here we are. Why? And here you are. Why? Because of our God. The big G-O-D. That's how big He is. And so, it's a testimony of God's presence Whenever you sing and you pray and, and you seek God in your circumstances. And, and we know that Romans 8.28 says, and We know all things work together to those who love God according to His purpose. Well, God, if this is, apparently if this is what you want. We talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego this morning. What a powerful message that came from the Word of God. Go back and listen to that. I'm going to actually use the word please. Please go listen to that. And see if God doesn't speak to your heart. This is a follow-up. So now we're at the conclusion. So what are you doing? It's not about how long we are on here. It's about did God, did God meet you? Did, did He take and try to help you? So here we are at midnight in the darkness of the terrible prison cell in Philippi. And Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God so that the prisoners could, other prisoners could hear them. Now what a great testimony. If you read the rest of that verse, there was, there was a prisoner. I, I mean, there, there was a jailer that also heard. The one who had hurt them and persecuted them. Bound them up and put them in the lower part of the prison. But they sang that that, that jailer would hear that there is a God. And you know what he said? All of a sudden a great earthquake took, earthquake took place. And all the, the doors and the, and the jail were open. All of the chains and, and ropes fell off. And the, the jailer, because if he let one person escape, then he would have to die in their place. And, but yet, he heard about this God that he had never heard about. And he, he began to understand that their testimony about their God was real to them. And they're even willing to accept whatever their fate may be. But they gave God the glory. And the jailer came up to Paul and Silas. Because he, he hollered out. And Paul and Silas said, Do yourself no harm. A lot of times they would take their own sword and run it through themselves. But they said, Do no harm. We're all here. We're all here. You know what that jailer said? He said, What must I do to be saved? Paul and Silas said, You just got to believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that what it tells us in John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever what? That whosoever what? Believeth. In other words, believe on Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved. Go back and look at John 3, 16 again. You learned it as a child. But did you understand it? See, I believe let, we, we need to be a good example for others to follow when you're going through the midnight hour. It's all about our testimony. It's all about our praise. So life is often very difficult. Life is often very painful. I understand that. I'm just as human as you are. But we're doing this live, and so every now and then we get a phone call, but that's okay. And But no matter what we face, I'll close with this. Let others hear us pray in a way that will touch their heart. Let others sing along with us and lift praises to our God. I hope maybe tonight, you, this sermon at midnight, there's three main things we need to pray. Number two, we need to sing. But not just sing, but sing unto God, right? That's what the Bible says. And then number three, we ought to sing in such a way that we need to be heard that others can hear about our God in spite of our circumstances. Will you let God use that? Will you let God help you tonight? Maybe your, your heart's broken. Maybe you thought you've been deceived. Maybe you feel like maybe you've gone through a divorce. Maybe uh, there may be someone out there that may be fixing to have to go to jail or whatever the horrible circumstances might be in their life. But I will tell you this. Your God changes not. He loves you. He, he allowed you to be born in the very first place. And He has a plan for you to know Him. Will you let Him know you? And will you get a place where you'll know Him? Thief on the cross was in a bad situation. 
He's about to die. And he confessed, I'm guilty. I deserve this. I deserve this crucifixion by the Romans. But he looked over at Jesus and said, Would you remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom? And right there on the spot, this Jesus that was beaten to the point he looked like, a, like a, a, an animal, yet he turned to that thief and said, Today thou wilt be with me in paradise. You know, it's amazing today that I thought about this the other day. The first person that Jesus walked into paradise was a thief on the cross. You say, well, what does that mean? Because he was no longer a thief on the cross. He was the child of a living God. So because of that transformation, that conversion, uh, when that thief died, Jesus immediately took him in, into paradise with him. What about you? Wouldn't you like to know tonight, during the midnight hour, did you know most heart attacks are at, at night or early in the morning? You see, you don't know for sure if you're going to be here tomorrow. The Bible says today is the accepted time. Now is the accepted time. Why, why don't you just do like the thief on the cross did? Let's do that. Pray with us, if you will. Christians that are on here, be praying that the Holy Spirit of God would reach out to this message and they would see God, not me. They see God, not you. And they begin to feel His presence as the Holy Spirit of God tugs at their heart. And they feel the need to ask Jesus to be their Savior. Father, I pray now that the Spirit of God would begin to tug at the hearts of those that need to be saved, even now. So, Father, hear our prayer. Hear their prayer. And so let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, pray it out loud. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. And I understand that I deserve hell. But I also understand that Jesus, you are the Christ. You're God. And you died for my sins. You paid in full what was owed. And on the third day, you came back to life after you died. So Lord, would you save me? Would you remember me? Lord Jesus, pray this out loud. Would you write my name in the Lamb's book of life? Thank you, Jesus, for your promise of everlasting life with you. Now, Father, I pray that as the Holy Spirit has now entered into me, that God in Spirit lives in me now. I'm a child of God. Pray this out loud. Holy Spirit, help me as I grow in your grace, in your love, and in your power that I might be a witness to the glory of God in my life even at my midnight hours. And all God's people agreed together by saying, Amen. Amen. Brother Jack, it's good to see you. So go back and listen to this morning's message. I'll have this one up in about 15 minutes uh, on there. But, you know, you're going through the midnight hour. Well, Brother Jack, you and I, we, we, we talked to each other when we were going through our midnight hours. And we encouraged each other and lifted each other up. And, and Tigger the same way. And Lady Karen the same way here. We, we know what it's like to, to be that friend because when you're going through your own midnight hour, you need someone to help get maybe maybe get you started to sing in praises and glory. Go back and listen to this message again. And if it touched your heart, hey, go ahead and put a like on it, but share it with somebody. Somebody says, how do you tag somebody on Facebook? You use the little at sign and you type their name in. Why well, would have to type in uh, on the comment? A little at sign, and I have to put you in there, Karen Honey, my wife. I said, Karen Honey, and all of a sudden her picture pops up, and I can send her a point, say, You need to listen to this. God laid it on my heart to share it with you and hit sin. She'll be notified, and then that way uh, she'll know that somebody cared enough about the message they heard to share it with her. You see, people need to hear our testimony. Father, we thank you for everyone and for all the memories that we've had and all the new memories that are coming. 
But Father, I believe that, you, that you've got something bigger and greater for all of us in these days as we are that generation that you have planned at this hour to take our stand just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. Father, I love you. Hugs and kisses in Jesus' name. And to all of you, hugs and kisses in Jesus' name to you too. Go, visit our website, lyitl.org, lovingyord.org. We'll see you on Wednesday. God bless you, 730 Central.